Do you want to sharpen your critical thinking skills, become an expert problem solver, or just never lose an argument again? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to Logic Made Accessible. Now we hear the word logic thrown around a lot, whether in the context of a rapper or petty fights on Twitter, but most fundamentally, logic is all about argument and persuasion. It's the formal study of correct reasoning patterns. In general, we make decisions, pass judgments, and express opinions in a fairly patterned fashion. Whether explicitly or implicitly, we start from a set of assumptions, and from those assumptions, we get to later beliefs. We call those starting assumptions premises, and those later beliefs that we arrive at conclusions. The process that we use to go from premise to conclusion is called inference or argument. It's important to notice here that for our purposes in logic, we care mostly about declarative sentences or sentences that assert something about the world that can either be true or false. For instance, the sentence, the sky is blue, makes a true statement about the world, where a statement like, fire is cold, asserts a false statement about the world. You can compare these types of sentences to a command like, close a door, or a question like, are you hungry? On their own, those sorts of sentences don't make any sort of assertion about the world, in the same way that a sentence like, the door is closed, or I am hungry, can. Now, when we have these sorts of statements, we can make further conclusions using inferences, and inferences play a part in virtually every decision we make in life. We have some sorts of intuitions about which inferences are good inferences and which inferences are bad inferences. For example, consider the following set of sentences. Premise one, Aristotle is a person. Premise two, all people are mortal. Conclusion, Aristotle is not mortal. In this exchange, you probably have an intuition that something here has gone wrong. This is where we introduce the notion of a logical form. We can study these forms to determine which of them lead to good conclusions and which of them lead to bad conclusions. In future lessons, we'll begin developing a vocabulary that will help us better describe these different logical forms. The previous example I gave is called a syllogism, and in the future, we'll also describe terms such as validity, soundness, and truth. Understanding logical form is incredibly useful and powerful because it allows us to turn commonly expressed arguments into something that is far more precise and understandable. For example, consider this following argument. It's pretty obvious that all snakes are animals. Think about it. What's a snake? It's a reptile, right? I mean, not just a single snake, all the snakes. You take any snake and it's a reptile. But then what's a reptile? Again, all the reptiles, not just a single one. You get it. Take any reptile. Is it not an animal? Of course it's an animal. So therefore, all snakes are animals. This is an unclear way of making an argument, at least compared to a more formally structured argument where the premises and conclusions are all laid out. But when we speak in everyday life, we usually don't lay out our conclusions and premises very clearly and structure our arguments very formally. This isn't to say that our common way of speaking is somehow defective or that the way a formally structured argument is always going to be better. But formalizing arguments does make it easier for us to characterize what went right or what went wrong when we're going through an inference. The previous paragraph is just a roundabout way to express the following argument. Premise one, all snakes are reptiles. Premise two, all reptiles are animals. Conclusion, all snakes are animals. Reducing to this premise-conclusion form makes it a lot easier to parse through what's actually happening in any given argument. The point of all this is to say that all arguments have certain features, and any set of statements that fits these features turns it into an argument. Of course, not every set of statements is actually an argument. Consider the following example. A self-taught musician, Julian Bream, learned playing to radio dance bands with the lute his father bought from a sailor on London's Charing Cross Road in 1947. As a child prodigy, his early recitals led to him being acknowledged as one of the most remarkable artists of the post-war era, according to the Royal Academy of Music. After studying piano and composition at the Royal College of Music and completing national service, he became one of the most prolific and best-selling recording artists in classical music. The set of statements in that paragraph does use language that is frequently used in argumentation, and it does have a bunch of declarative sentences that can each be declared true or false, but there's no discernible logical connection between them. There's no conclusion that's being reached from the set of the different premises. Thus, it doesn't really make sense to consider the paragraph an argument, even though it's a case that it does make a bunch of claims about a beloved classical guitarist. Logic is the formal study of correct reasoning patterns. When we engage in logical argumentation, we don't care as much about the actual content of the declarative sentences as we do the logical form that the inferences take on. In order to characterize these inferences, we need a better vocabulary that we can use to describe its features. This vocabulary, the ideas of validity, soundness, and truth, will be the topic of the next lesson.